hopefully in the past. Um, if you guys remember, we talked about the electrical furnace as an electrical burning, electricity burning furnace. So you burn electricity in order to get you the heating element, the heating, the heating source is electricity. Today we're going to talk about gas and oil. Um, central heating system. If you have a gas and oil, that's what we mostly natural gas. What we use natural gas, and uh, in uh, rural areas they use propane, I believe, or some type of an oil. Um, so you can burn oil in order to get through your heating elements. In order to get energy gas, you have to burn energy. You have to burn something. When you came here, if you came, you drove your car, you burn some gas in your car to get you here. So. The same thing, when you heat a house or a building, you need to burn something. Either you burn electricity, lack of electric furnace, or you burn gas, natural gas furnace, or you burn oil, an oil burning furnace. A lot of building gas are natural gas or oil. They burn at Dunwoody here in order to heat us in the, in the summer, in the winter. Okay, so when you, so there are two factors for heating. Factor number one is the source of energy. Are you heating using gas or oil or electricity? Factor number two, what are you heating? Are you heating the air and circulating the air? Or are you heating water and circulating the water? So there are two ways, guys, of transferring the heat into the building. One way is heating the air and blowing that air into ducts and circulating that that dock, that hot air into the house. That's the air based. And the other one is, um, is uh, you burn, um, you burn natural gas or oil, and you heat the water, and you circulate through pumps. You circulate the water to radiators, and these radiators they radiate the heat into the building. That's called hydronic. Anybody have seen the hydronic? In terms of what, what they either can be water heaters or can be. Um, um, hot waters. So let me get my uh, pointer here. Okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about, guys. We're, we'll talk about the, uh, the warm air versus warm water that you circulate into in order to get you the heat. Uh, requirement for branch circuits for central. What do you do in terms of branch circuits and control for central air? We'll talk about these ones. Um, Major components of typical, typical heating element, what are the, the heating? When you heat a building like Dunwoody or your house, what are the major components? You, you know, the chamber and so forth. And you see requirement for a class two circuit. When it comes to HVAC equipment, guys, I can't emphasize more. When it comes to mechanical equipment, they're always mad two circuits you're dealing with. Circuit number one is you want to power these equipment. Circuit number two is you need to control these equipment. So I have my power and my control. Does that make sense, guys? You have power and control. So class two circuit is your control circuit. When you have that big furnace, you need to be able to power it electric by electricity. Um, if it's electric furnace or by also the blower need electricity if it's, bur if, if it's oil and so forth. Then you need to control it. Okay, forced warm air furnaces. This is called gas fired. That's the one that you have in your basement. Gas fired. So we use the heating element is natural gas, typically. Forced air um, furnaces, most common. What they do, guys, have you ever, anybody have ever opened the furnaces? Do you guys butter on with your furnaces at home? If you open it there, <laughs> you, you, know, you look what they, what they do there. The big chamber that they burn natural gas right at the bottom. They burn this natural gas in a chamber. That chamber has coils. And th then when they burn uh, the, when they have a, a fire basically inside your furnace going on into mechanical coils, literally coils, you heat these coils. That's, then here's the coils. These coils now are hot. What you do when you bring a big blower right inside your furnace and you blow the air through the, these hot pipes. What happened from the other end? You get hot air. And they channel the hot air through ducts to every room inside your house. That's how they, that they do the, so that's how they do the heating. So you have, you fire, you burn the gas, and then you warm the air, you blow the air through the blower, and you circulate this air into the house. Forced air, 
So what does it do? You do you move the hot air from the furnace through hot air ducts. Um, there's registers that you've seen these little registers that where the hot air will come out of it. And there's also the return, the hot air registers and the return. So what they do is they put them into every in every location in the, in the house and they have a return. So so the they suck. What they do is when they blow the air through the house, they need to suck it. The blower will suck the air from every room through the return, bring that air into the furnace, right? Heat the air, transfer the heat into it, and blow it back into the room. They call it circulating, heating the air and circulating into the house. And because we don't want to kill people with, um, with uh, uh, toxic gases, they have a pipe, guys, from outside now, and where they bring fresh air. They mix fresh air with it. So they can um, um, they can always have oxygen enough oxygen because you're burning when you're burning what you're doing is you're using oxygen so they have they have a pipe that actually brings oxygen from the outside into the burning chamber the new ones where you can uh, you're not using the oxygen inside the room and also they have another pipe that brings fresh air from the outside duct to continuously feed your house with um, with the um, fresh oxygen okay any question guys about that so-called gas fired forced warm air furnace very easy you burn electricity in a chamber you blow the air through the coils that's hot you got hot air and you circulate this hot air through the house we will be talking about this one matt when it comes to the commercial later on we're going to have a boiler in the commercial building we're going to circulate typically in a commercial building we circulate water we don't circulate air it's hard to bring the air from the basement all the way to here at dunwoody to the third floor very hard so what they do guys is um they circulate water into uh what we call the air handling units and the air handling units with big blowers blows the air into center certain areas in the building okay the second one guys is called hot water system so hot air versus hot water. Here's what the difference is. Move hot water through the pipes. So this one, instead of burning and heating the air and circulating the air, you are heating the water. So you have to have piped that water. Anybody have seen them? You've seen that hot water? Not commonly here. It's not a whole lot of common. I've never seen it. Where do you see it? circulating radiators all over okay so radiators or so-called baseboards they have radiators that's sitting um, and getting the water in and out these are your radiators you put the water in hot water come out cold water it goes back into the boiler my boiler it keeps heating that water and circulating it how do you circulate the water it's not electricity. The circulate the water, the smarter than Chad, put pumps. So you have to have a pump to circulate the water. So they use pumps and circulating these water into radiators with a lot of control to control it. Um, so they can uh, they can put these pipes, guys, underground, in the ceiling, in the floor, or just a, a surface mounted. Um, so there's so many ways of doing it. You need to have a return pipe, and it's called hydraulic. The system with hydronic liquid system why hydronic because it has water in it so you heat the water and you circulate the water you heat the water you circulate the water into the areas that you want to heat and by conduction the heat will transfer to the air in this area either through the radiators or embedded coils you can put them in underground on, on, in, in the floor they use them also or in the ceiling or in the wall you embed them so you can transfer the to the, the heat from the water into the space they would need. What's in it for us? That's how it works. What's in it for us? You guys need to design the electrical system for it. Before I leave this one, guys, any comments, any questions about the two heating sources or, or ways? One is hot air and circulated. The other one is hot water and circulated. Any comments, any questions? Now, the smarter than Chad, later on, they start doing hot water and hot air combination between the two guys like i done with it we heat the water we bring the water to circulate the water not here do you see any water here we circulate the water guys into an air handling unit and to a coil and we throw the air right through the hot water you get hot air from the other side so they have a combination when we go to the commercial we start using hot water hot air um 
Okay, so that's the that's how it works. You need a thermostat, room thermostat or house thermostat to regulate the temperature, upper and lower limit. Um, typically, you put them in an indoor wall. You put in if you put them in outside the uh, indoor uh, um, wall. If you put them in outside wall, anybody have ever tried put thermostat in outside wall? You know, outside walls are always cooler than inside walls, right? Especially in Minnesota. So it, if you put it outside, your furnace, your house will be, it, it wouldn't get you a good um, uh, temperature. It doesn't sense the actual average temperature in your house. Um, so there's a lot of valves, guys, and controls involved with it. We'll look at these ones in a second to make the system work. When it comes to heating, imagine guys having a natural gas burning inside your house every night in the winter. Just, just can you guys imagine that when you're sleeping, there's a burning natural gas burning in your basement in a house that's made completely out of wood? Does this scare the crap out of you? It did the first time I moved to Minnesota. I see there's a burning thing inside my basement in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping. So what I'm trying to get to you is there's a lot of safety control going on here. Does that make sense? Safety. So imagine every night that you're sleeping, there is a valve sitting there in your in your natural gas uh, furnace, and that valve open the gas, and a spark that comes and start the fire in your basement while you're sleeping, and you trust that's okay. <laughs> Does it? Am I the only one who would think it's in interesting while sleeping? While you're sleeping in a wood house. You know, I'm not going to tell you what happened if that system malfunction. Imagine filling your house, God forbid, with natural gas and have a spark. What's going to happen? You blow up the house. We see it all the time when it malfunction. Okay, so safety is a big deal when it comes to these mechanical equipment. Same thing for hot water, guys. You're circulating hot water. Imagine if that hot water is the malfunction or if that boiler, the same that boils hot water, malfunction. A lot, a lot of control for safety. Control on safety. Um, these guys come as package unit, like you know, it's called the electrical furnace or the, the gas furnace. You're looking at one of these. Let's look at a couple of pictures that we have here, guys, for some of them. Um, this happened to be a um, gas burner forced hot water system. Gas burner forced hot water system. So this is my just this is my gas burner and forced hot water. So here's how it goes. Um, I want to bring to your attention, guys, that the heating element here is gas, right here. Can you guys see that? Um, what I need to do is I need to bring a circuit to, it looks like too hot, so it, see a 20 amp circuit. You bring it to the system. Can you guys see it? I'm bringing a 20 amp, two pole, 240, or 120, 240, 20 amp circuit to the system look what happened there right with so you can see with the controller is i have a circulating pump that circulating pump will circulate the water through the radiators and back that's how the water is going to be circulated through the radiators and back i also have uh, line voltage gas valves so this is where we're going to start that chamber burning open the, the gas natural gas coming in open the gas you don't open the gas before the spike is there, right? There's a lot of safety issues. So you put the spike, the gas valve, you open the gas valves after you make sure that there is um, there is a, spark, a spike there to start the, the process. Okay, there's your thermostat that's going to be controlling the process. This is called the class 2 circuit. I'm going to emphasize the word class 2 circuit. Control circuits, Karen, are called class 2 circuits. They are power limited circuits, class two circuits, power limited circuits. They're typically 30 volt or less circuits. Class two circuits is 30 volt or less, um, typically. And they are very limited in power, 100 watt, 100 watt volt amps. That's all what they have. Um, class two circuits, guys, the thermostat wire, what we call it. So Matt, you shall not base on any secret book that put that thermostat wire inside a pipe or a cable that also carries power. So they have to separate, we have to separate the power from the control circuit from the power circuit. There's also safety circuits, as you guess, say class one and class two. Uh, it's also control circuits for safety, control for safety. So I have high temperature limit. If you reach a high temperature limit, it shuts down the system before you start the fire. 
um, safety shut, um, shut off valve. There's a safety shut off valve, so I can't emphasize, guys, you're burning natural gas or oil in a house. Um, uh, tons and tons of sensors to make sure that the process is not going to um, is going to work as as planned. A good example, for example, before you, if you ever watch the natural gas before the start, the, before they open the valve, the natural gas valve, they, there is a sensor that senses that there is a spark coming, waiting. Otherwise, otherwise, what happens if you open the gas valve and there is no spark? to start the um, burning process. Anybody knows what? Your house will be filled with natural gas. And I'm not going to tell you guys, when your fridge kicks in, all what it takes, just your refrigerator kicks in, and uh, or you turn the switch on and you blow up the house. So there's a lot of safety that valve will not open unless it senses, it's mechanical, mechanical that senses that the pilot, so-called the electronic pilot or the, um, the fire pilot or whatever they call them, that pilot is hot enough to start the burning process in the chamber, burning chamber. So when it sense that there is a hot, so now we can open the valve. When you open the valve and there is a hot object, guys, right next to what do you do? You start the burning process in a controlled burning process, controlled burning process inside that burning chamber. Anyway, so these are the most important thing. I can't emphasize. Here's your power circuit coming in. It's powering the control circuits as well as the pump. What's the job of the pump, guys? The job of the pump is to circulate the hot water into the radiators so it can radiate the heat into the location that you want it to be radiated to. Any comments, any questions? Can you guys give me a thumbs up for two things? Number one, the power circuit. We fully understand that there's a power circuit chat to power that pump as well as to power all the control. These control need, the control guys need a circuit to power, right? You can't have control without powering. What is a control circuit? Control circuit is a low voltage circuit. You have a little transformer just to give the juice so that control circuit can work. So you bring that 2240 system, power the control circuits as well as the pump. Then, then the control circuit, now we have a, the control circuit in the thermostat will control turning on and off that <clears throat> burning process. And there's a bunch of other circuits for safety. The control circuits, there are three types of control circuits. They're called class one, class two, and class three. They, that's what they named them. Class one, class two, and class three. You guys will be dealing with class two. Class two is your th thermostat wire. We'll talk about this one um, later on. Here's all the major components, guys, of that burning process from the circulating pump to the control circuit to the combustion chamber. Uh, to the draft regulators, and I'm not going to go into the details on all of each and every one of them. These are put together control system. <clears throat> There's a bunch of others, high temperature limit, hydronic system, ignition, pump zone, thermocoupling. I want to talk about these. These are thermocoupling, guys. These are, these two in particular, um, here's how they control. I thought this is really interesting. The principle of thermocoupling, guys, when you have a fire here, this is how they, they, they make the, the natural gas valve open. That's the most important thing is how can you control opening the natural gas valve? Here's your pilot. When that pilot, when you kick, when the furnace kicks in, the pilot will, you turn your electronic pilot or natural gas pilot, whatever, that pilot turns on. When it turns on, it's connected to a material, two material, this similar materials, copper, nickel, alloy, they call them. And it's that tiny little pilot um, heat is enough, enough because of the materials that they're using, enough special material to generate current. When it generates current, guys, that's how they sense that the pilot is on. Believe it or not, that circulating, see that circulating current right here? That's what it sensed. When, when the system senses that there is circulating current, this is an indication that the pilot is on. Then it sends the signal to the controller. The controller will say to the gas valve, we have detected that the pilot is on. You can safely open now. And then they open the gas valve. I don't know if it bothers you guys. How did they, how did they sense that there's, there's, the pilot is on? That's how they, the, the mechanism that they sense it. Then they add them all together. 
all these materials from these different materials, couple, uh, they call them copper, nickel, alloy, and when they heat them, it's just a little material next to the pilot, it's heated, generates microcurrent, small amount of current, enough to be sensed by a PLC, you did PLCs with us, you guys did, it's like a PLC, you sense that little current. Now the current is there, now we have uh, verified the existence of the pilot, meaning there is a spike that will start the combustion. That's what you're trying to do. So this is that the principle of operation for this thermo thermopile or thermocouple. Uh, when you put them together, they call them thermopile. Uh, by this method, they can detect that the pilot is on and it's safe to open the gas or the oil valve. Does that make sense? That's one method of doing them. And we don't need to know that, but it's really nice to, you know, with you. All this guys is done by manufacturers. What we deal is with a packaged piece of equipment and we need, for the most part, we need to provide to it two things. You need to provide a disconnect to disconnect it and a power circuit to power it. Any comments, guys, any questions? We'll look at a couple of examples of, of control circuits. Any comments, any questions? How many of you guys have ever heard of class two, class one, class two, and class three circuits? If you did electrical with us, you heard of class one, class two, and class three circuits. We have, now this is, now we know the power circuit. I showed you that here's my power circuit. My power circuit is right here. We're all familiar with the power circuit. Yesterday, guys, we did tons of examples of our power circuit. Now the control circuits, these control circuits, so you can the class one circuit, class two circuit. These are the ones, the control circuit, control to control the process. They are control circuit that they call them class one, two, and three. The job of the control circuit, guys, is the proper operation of the equipment, the proper and safe operation of the equipment to make sure that the equipment is going to work properly and work what? Safely. So we use this circuit to assure that the equipment is safe, working safely and working properly. So they call the remote control. Here's my first one of them. The first one's called remote control. Signaling and power limited circuits. Remote control, signaling and power limited circuits. Any one of these circuits can be a remote control, signaling and power limited circuits. The, sign the most important one for heating and cooling, guys, is a class two circuit. Class two circuit typically limited to 30 volt and 100 volt amp. That's it. Can I use 40 volt? Can I use 120 on it? No, typically. 30 volt, 100 volt amp. Why is 100 volt amp so important? You know what 100 volt amp, guys? It doesn't have enough juice. So this circuit is safe they call it um, shock safes from a shock and from the fire fire and safety so it has a safety fire safety safe from a fire arc arc safety safe from an arcing point of view as well as from a shock point of view so it wouldn't shock you even if you tried and it wouldn't burn your house even if you tried or arc you know, no arcing no shock on that one so that's the safest one that they use a lot for for residential I want to emphasize maximum voltage 30 volt, maximum volt amp is 100, 100. When you power, so what they do is they have a transformer, guys. They put, you cannot put in the primary side more than 20 amps, 120 here, right? On the secondary side, typically 24 volt. You can't put higher than 20 amps, primary. And then here's all your control circuit. It's right here, and this is rated for a 100 volt amp transformer, 100 volt amp transformer. Limited it. You can't get more than 100 volt amp. 150 volt amp? No. So very small amount of current and uh, uh, limited in the power that can provide and the voltage that you can uh, you can um, uh, wire it with. So why safety? Safety is the most important thing about this one. So low voltage, class one and class three circuits, guys. Class one and class three circuits. I always tell the students, class three circuits is shock hazard. Class three circuits, guys, can go as high as 120 volt. It's still a control circuit, 120 volt. 
Why don't we use a class three circuits typically in residential because 120 volt is enough to shock you. But if you have a factory or a commercial building, you can use a class three circuit and you can power that control circuit with 120. So it has a shock hazard. There is a shock hazard in it. The class one circuit guys, they call it class one circuit. There are two types of class one circuit. One type is power limited, 30 volt, 1000 volt amp. And we'll talk about this one again as we go. Um, the power limited, power limited, this will limit you to 30 volt and 1000 volt amp, volt amp. And the other one is none power limited. So class one circuit divided into two. One is power limited, the other one is non-power limited. Who cares? You have, an, you have a, a chemical plant, right? Refinery. You know how many control circuits they have in these refineries for the pumps and every single thing? Do you think a 24 volt will cut it in a big refinery or big manufacturing place where you have to control tons and tons of things and bring them to the PLCs and all this stuff? Do you think a 24 volt will cut it? Do you think the refinery is like my house? So for these systems, guys, that need more power for the control circuit, the control circuit need a lot of power. Typically, they power them with what's so-called class one non-power limited. You know what the voltage for a class one control circuit non-power limited is? 600 volt. You can bring up to 600 volt a control circuit. It's exactly like any other power circuit. So anyway, Summarize, for all our application guys, we're using class two circuit, the safest from the shock hazard and the arc hazard. When you go commercial industrial, they start using a class one and a class three circuits. Class three circuits is safer than class one circuit. It gives you more, more voltages, higher voltages. Uh, class one circuit, it gives you two things, higher voltage and higher volt amps, power. And it's typically used in major, major control circuits. Any comments, guys? Any questions? And we'll uh, we'll review that these classes in a second. Okay. Um, the definition of um, a remote control circuit, guys. <clears throat> remote control circuit, um, as well as um, signaling circuit. Let's start with a signaling circuit. When you see. A signaling circuit. What do you mean by a signaling circuit? Signaling circuit, right here. Can you guys see that one? This is in your book. A signaling circuit, a good example of a signaling circuit is your doorbell. The chime that you have, right? So you put 120 here, you want 20 volt, and you get your 16 volt or 12 volt right in here, and you push that button, you put your chime on. This is a class 2 circuit. Signaling circuit. Can I have thumbs up, chat? A good example of that one class two signaling circuit. Okay. Now that's your signal where the sig it's signaling. It's initiating a signal. Another example of that one: the horns and the strobes, guys, in security systems. Horns and strobes and all this good stuff. Remote control circuit. Uh, remote control circuit, guys. Here's a, a second remote control. When you it's a control circuit like this one. You energize a coil, and the coil will drive contacts. To turn on and off so a remote control circuit is a circuit that you energize to energize another circuit you energize one circuit to energize another circuit energize one circuit to energize another circuit that's what you guys did with the i don't know who taught you uh in the motor lab in the motor lab scott motor and the plc's when you energize that when you have a, a little transformer 120 in one side 24 from the other side and you dump it across a coil you energize the coil, bang, it close contacts, it start the motor on. So this, this circuit here could be um, the remote control. Your, this would be equivalent to your thermostat circuit. Your thermostat closes, closes a contact through the controller, start that blower as well as the burning process. Cool? That's so-called uh, remote control. The last one is um, uh, power, power limited, guys. Power limited is, they use them um, a lot like a damper. Have you ever seen a damper? I don't know how much you guys have seen. Dampers, are like an air handling unit, it's big air handling unit. They have little doors that open and close to bring more or less air from the outside. I don't know if you've seen them opening and closing these doors. They call them dampers. They have a little motor on them that run at 24 volt. These 24 volt, these are power limited 
these are the so-called the power limited um, circuits. So you bring a 24 volt to this damper and the damper now will open, tick, 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 now open up to this top. Then when you want to close it halfway, it goes all the way, it close halfway, all the way, you see, guess that you control opening and closing. That's a good example of um, power limited circuit, a power limited circuit. It's a tiny little motor that you're controlling the, 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 the speed of that motor, really the movement of that motor, so you can open and close a damper. Any comments, any questions, guys, about so-called signaling when they say, because these are called power signaling, remote control signaling and power limited circuits. These circuits are called, right? So when they say signaling, they mean security systems, like chimes and all security systems. When, there is, when, there, when they say uh, remote control, this is your thermostat and motor control. When they say um, power limited, think of a damper. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand these for the class one, class two, and class three circuits. Any one of them could be any of the three, depending on how many. What's the difference? Can any one of them, like I said, you can go class one, class two, class three. And like I said, class one is divided into two. So this is divided into two. This is none, and this is power. One of them is none. None power limited, and the other one is power limited. Any one of them could be any of these uh, classes. Any comments, any questions? The common denominator between all these, you shall not put them in the same conduit, same box with the power and lighting circuits. Can't put them. So that's your um, class circuits. Let's, um, let's go back and show you a couple of uh, pictures, guys, here, and then... Okay. Natural gas. I want to bring to your attention, this is what you guys did with your friend Chad. Um, what you did is you brought a 20, a 15 amp, here's my 15 amp circuit breaker coming from the panel. Um, here's my panel, right? Here's my panel, and my panel is feeding. Here's my panel. This is my, say, 100 amp, uh, 240-120 volt panel. By NEC code book, you guys have done with Chad, you brought, um, you have to provide a 15 amp circuit for the furnace, that gas or oil fired furnace, right? So that's my 15 amp. Then you have to have a disconnect. So what we did, we have a snap switch. Do you guys remember that snap switch that you did here? This is my disconnect so I can disconnect the equipment. You guys have to provide that one. So that's, that's what you guys did with me. Then that's your power circuit. This is my power circuit. Can you guys see that? This is my so-called power circuit. Now the second one is my control circuit. Can you guys see that? My control circuit is going all the way to the thermostat. This is class two circuit, control circuit. This is a class two control circuit. Now for a class two control circuit, Karen, number one, you cannot put that green circuit, the control circuit, and the power circuit in the same pipe. They're completely different. One control, one power. They shall not enter the same uh, enclosure. The only time they, these guys meet are they meet right here inside the equipment at the controller. The cables that they use, Adam, for a class two circuit, they are not the THHN conductor, though you can use THHN. They, they call them class two cables, like thermostat wire, class two cables, class two cables. Or if it's a three, it will be class three cables or class one cables. Plus two and plus three cables. Can I get you guys to understand that this green circuit is a secret cow, shall not be mixed up with the power circuit in any way, shape, or form. You can't do it. You violate the code. So when you design it later on on a, on a commercial project and you want to pipe this green circuit, you have to provide what? A separate pipe, if it's pipe. Any comments, guys, any questions for this natural gas um, furnace? Straightforward. 15 amp, it's natural gas. We talked about this one, so I'm not gonna talk. This is the, um, that one was the, the gas, uh, gas burner. For this one, guys, I just wanna emphasize, for this guy, the control circuit, here's a class one control circuit, a class one control circuit, and I wanna emphasize a class two control circuit. So the class two control circuit for the proper operation of the equipment, class one circuit here is for safety. 
And have thumbs up chat. We fully understand that control circuit one and two and three. Um, here's my power circuit coming in. This is my power. All the rest of them, all these right here are control. Control circuits. Any comments, any questions, guys, about that? One of them is the class one. Typically, class one guys is safety. If something related to safety, they use class one circuit. If something related, I mean, very important, like for example, um, gas valve. Do you care about opening the gas valve? Right? Do you want to fill your house with gas? So, thermostat here as a class one. If, what happens if your thermostat does not kick in and you need it to kick in? Would you burn your house? You wouldn't, right? So, safety is not an issue, but gas is an issue so so that's um this guy guys is um where they're from gas burner forced warm air this is gas burner this is what you have in your basement look how they, that, that that baby works i want to bring to your attention very very important thing um into your attention number one is your thermostat the control circuit right here this is my thermostat so got my thermostat. I want to bring to your attention, guys, the power circuit is coming from right here. Here's my power circuit. This circuit is my power. My power circuit. Control. Class one circuit is control right here. Look at that. You you through the controller, here's your gas valve. You control over the enclosing the gas valve. There's safety shut off. Here's class one circuit. Safety at high temperature. Plus, here's the fan, the blower is powering, the, you're powering the blower. So you bring the power here to power the power, and at the same time, you power the transformer that's put at 24 volts here from this side, 120 from this side, to do the whole control system. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand class one, class two, and class three circuits. Not fully, but at least we will be touching this, guys, as we move on, because when we go air handling it and chillers, they all going to have a class one, two, or three circuits. Somebody walk and say, what, what is a class one, two, or three circuits? What are you going to, the word that's going to come to yourself is what? Control signaling. Control and signaling. Can you put these control circuits with the power circuit in a pipe or a box or anything else? No. Why? Why? Because the code says don't. But why? Well, think why. Why? Well, if you put, if you guys put a, a power circuit with a control circuit, the power circuit has a lot of juice. It could influence the behavior of the control circuit. So you could, you, it could make the control circuit malfunction. It could induce more voltage into the control circuit and make it mal malfunction. Okay, so let's look at the second one. This guy happened to be, and these all these diagram guys, uh, it's an oil burner. Then an oil burner um, installation. Oil burner. So, same thing. Can you just see that? Um, I will bring to your attention my power circuit coming in here. This is my power. My, I have a bunch of control circuits. Here's my control circuit number one. And these are all my safety circuit. My safety circuit, which is also control and signaling circuits. Um, same thing, guys. We, uh, we have a controller. That controls the burning. Here's where I do the ignition. Ignition so I can burn the oil here. And also, the only difference here is we're circulating water. So we have a pipe that goes to a radiator and come bring it back. So the, there's, we're circulating. Can you guys see that? We're burning oil, heating water, and circulating that water to radiators. What's your job and mine? Our job is to provide a power to power this equipment. You need a disconnect to disconnect these equipment at one time, and you need a control wires to control these equipment. Typically, what we provide, all the, this will be in, guys, what we provide is a thermostat and a class 2 circuit. So this is what we typically provide for these systems. So this and this is what we provide. The rest will be inside the uh, furnace. Any comments, any questions inside the boiler? Does it make sense, guys? If you learn these now and you get it, guys, you're good to go for, for what's coming. This is also another um, oil burner with a complete controller that controls the whole, the whole thing through a 120. I want to bring to your attention, guys, the thermostat. 
Here's my control circuit, class two. It's running at 24 volt. Here's my high pressure. Uh, my power circuit is right here. Power. So you bring your power to the controller. There is a um, high limit shut off. And then you have a controller circuit. So your job would be to provide this and typically this. And everything else will be provided by the manufacturer. When it comes to HVAC equipment, again, it accounts for 30 to 40% of your electrical load. You need to deal with it. We don't size them, guys. We don't decide what size boiler do we need for this building. That's not your, none, of your, none of our business for the most part. That's the mechanical guys, mechanical engineers and mechanical contractors design and install these. We power them. We power them. We talked about how this, uh, the concept, how they sense, this is how they sense that the pilot is on and they authorize the gas valve to open. Very, very important concept here, guys. A tiny little fire could create a microcurrent that can control, the controller will sense to open the gas valve. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. Talked about this. Here's a couple of thermostat guys from from programmable thermostat. We talked about these. Um, talked about air conditioning in the past. Okay, that's the last thing I want to talk about is you can uh, the, for the thermostat wire. Can you guys see? I want to bring your attention. This is my thermostat wire right here. Can you guys see it right here? The cold coming to the thermostat. And this, of course, my pipe, this is my pipe, and that's my power going to the circuit breaker, 15 amp. The code allows you guys to attach the thermostat wire to the pipe or cable that's carrying the power circuit if they are functionally associated. You're going to hear the word functionally associated. What is functionally associated? Do you think that? both of them are powering or controlling the same equipment. That's what functionally associated is. One of them power and the other control, but functionally associated means the same piece of equipment. So basically, I can't pull this one here and go control another piece of equipment here. If they're functionally associated, meaning they're controlling, powering, one of them is powering, the other one is controlling the same piece of equipment, then they're function associated. You can attach the class two circuits to the conduit or the cable that's going to that piece of equipment, but you cannot put it inside that cable or inside that conduit. Does that make sense? You can attach it to it. Otherwise, you cannot even attach it to it. If it's not function associated, you can't even attach it to it. So that's a big deal. The inspector picks you on you all the time. For class two circuits, guys, here's color coding that they use in the thermostat wire. Um, it all the way up to 12 from 12 uh, wires. You can go from red, white, green, blue, yellow, brown, all the way to the other. So uh, when they, when you wire them, depending on um, number of conductors, conductor one is red, number two is white, all the way to 12 is purple. These are great when you want, we're talking about class two circuit now, class three, class two, class three, and class one circuit, control, strictly control. These will help you guys identify which wire land on which terminal. So the manufacturer wiring, I don't know if you guys wire the furnace with us here, with the control circuit for a furnace. You can land all these wires, are land based on the, uh, the wiring diagram with the manufacturers on a certain terminals inside the controller. So color code is a big deal for the controlling system. For you, FYI only, we talked about the thermostat. Okay, so that's all what I have for you guys in terms of uh, uh, gas and oil furnaces. Any comments, guys, any questions? If there's anything I would like you guys to get out of this class, really, um, I know you're, uh, this, is, this is still residential. Everything that we said right now, guys, apply to commercial industrial buildings it becomes bigger now oil burners and gas burners they use them here dunwoody oil burners and gas burners to heat that building they add other components when the building becomes big and huge circulating the air through a huge area or the water through a huge area becomes an uh, 
a major job and we need to have bigger pumps and bigger blowers. That's only the difference. So comments, questions? Any comments, any questions for Chad? I know it's Friday. So I can't emphasize guys before I leave this topic. The control circuits, I'm gonna say class one, class two, and class three. And class one is divided into two types. Power limited and non power limited. In terms of using them, here's ha ha the hierarchy for using them. Guys. We first we use this one. If you if you need more juice, class two is your first option. Safest shock and and fire. Um, class three is the second option. Your bigger equipment, longer distances. We start using class three. You get into bigger, even more equipment, you move to class one circuit. Class one circuit, the first option for class one circuit will be the power limited here, that will be A. You use class one A. If you still need juice, because the equipment is so huge to control and need more juice, your last option would be what? B, which is the last option, would be class one non-power limited. That one has 600 volt. Can you believe a 600 volt control circuit? And unlimited power. I can have like 100, 100 kVA. Just power. Do you guys understand when, when, it, when they say power? That when, it, when, when you say 100 watt, 100 watt bulb. You know what 100 watt bulb is, right? That's just light. What's 100 watt power? 100, 100 watt power. How do you count the power? Take all the coils. Little coins that you're energizing. Take the sensors, a tiny little sensor. Here. So that will be one watt. That will be two watt. That's what you're adding. A watt, a two watt, a three watt, all these tiny little sensors that you need to energize. You need to add them all up. They shall not exceed 100 watt. So that doorbell, that chime, five watt. That's all what it takes. 10 watt maybe. So these are what these are what you're dealing with. Small amount of um of watts for the control or signaling. Unlike this light right above your head, you're looking at at least 80 watts right here, one of them. But that's not a control circuit though. Any comments, any questions before I let you guys uh, uh off the hook for a second? Okay, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I would like to give you um, maybe 10 minutes. And then I'm going to do only two, one example of two parts about HVAC equipment, like we the one that we needed to finish. And then um, my expectation, guys, for you today is to print wherever you are in lighting. Come Monday morning, I promise you, I will put your lighting and power um, the first thing after my lecture Monday morning, guys, and we will go over your power and lighting. Now you now you circuited. I want to see how you're going to circuit power and lighting. That's why I waited on the power a little bit because it's they're very common, you know, in, in terms of concepts. So comes Monday morning, we'll look at your power and lighting and we'll move on. Cool. But I would like you, when I say print today, guys, my expectation is the following. Number one, all your lights are laid out with the switches that's going to be controlling them. All your lights are looped together and circuited based on no more than nine circuits on one uh, on one 50 amp circuit and nine nine lights looped circuited numbered so I don't want to see just a home run what's a circuit that's going to it and also all the common areas are laid out the lights for the common areas the stairways all the lights laid out all the switches placed looped and circuited does that make sense? Is that doable? No, yes. Okay. Let's take 10 minutes. And then, by the way, my example shouldn't take more than probably 20 minutes. That's coming. Thank you.